All right, let's take a look at what's going on uh, as President Trump will be heading to the NATO meeting. Do we really need NATO? We've had a lot of people talking about how it is uh, obsolete. Great article by David Stockman talking about how uh, it's very clear that we don't need NATO anymore, that it is an obsolete fossil. He points out, of course, it's been 73 years since uh, Hitler's Third Reich fell. It's been 27 years since the Soviet Union fell, and yet we still have 35,000 soldiers stationed permanently in Germany to protect from an imminent invasion by Russia. Is that really the case? Do the Germans really believe that's the case? You know, when you look at their paltry defense budget, as he points out, they've got a defense budget that is barely 1.1% of Germany's economy, uh, which is three times bigger than Russia. And they only spend 1.1%. Are they worried about Russia? I don't think so. Not if, put your dollars where your mouth is. If they were really concerned about a military threat from Russia, do you think the Germans would be spending more than 1.1% of their massive GDP? Uh Uh-uh, no. It's a lie. They don't care about that. As a matter of fact, as I pointed out last week when I was talking to Gerald Salenti, you look at even the pressure that's being put on the uh, EU nations by people like Secretary of Defense Mattis uh, saying, you know, pony up, at least pay your 2%. Because, you know, folks, the 2% that they have there, the UK, when they look at what percentage they're spending in terms of compliance with NATO and so forth, they include pensions in their military spending. The French are including their parades in their military defense budget. They're not concerned about being invaded by Russia. Come on. We can tell that. And we know that the reason that the American military establishment, the Pentagon, the Secretary of Defense are putting pressure on them to spend more money is simply because they want to sell them more weapons. The military industrial complex wants to sell them more weapons. I believe, however, that this is an opportunity because President Trump, as David Stockman and others point out, President Trump has talked about how useless it is for us to have troops everywhere. Uh, In this article from David Stockman, he said the clear intent of uh, President Trump's campaign was to seek an easing of tensions with Vladimir Putin and Russia, uh, to revamp America's commitments to NATO and other Cold War relics, and to discard regime change as the core tenet of foreign policy. Why are we involved in over seven wars that we have publicly announced but not legally declared? Well, it's all because of regime change. Has it made the world better, more stable? Are we safer? Of course we're not. The Department of Defense and the State Department have been destabilizing the Middle East. And that destabilization has driven massive hordes of migrants out of their country into Europe. It will be bringing people into our country as well. Uh, That's exactly what they want. This is by design. It's not that they're stupid and incompetent. No, this is by design. He also goes on to say that President Trump has sensibly suggested that demonizing Russia and Putin has accomplished nothing, and they should be invited back into the G8. And as soon as Robert Mueller finishes his Russiagate farce, David Stockman says Trump can get rid of the present asinine sanctions on various Russian officials and Putin cronies as well. We also know... Now, owing to reporting by the Washington Post that Trump has been hounding the national security bureaucracy about another utterly ridiculous artifact of the empire, NATO. And so he goes on to talk about that and quotes uh, Justin Raimondo of um, antiwar.com. He says, finally, we have an American president who has awoken to the fact that the U.S., that that World War II, not to mention the Cold War, is over. There is no need for U.S. troops to occupy Germany. Vladimir Putin isn't going to march into Berlin in a reenactment of the Red Army taking the Fuhrer's bunker. But even if he was so inclined, why won't Germany defend itself? And again, I guess it's back to if they're really worried about it, if they really think that's going to be the case, then it's incumbent on Germany to defend themselves. And they obviously don't believe it because they're not spending any money on that. Now, the headline on uh, RT, I think, says it all. U.S. establishment is in hysterics that Trump and Putin summit that will be next week might succeed. That's the last thing they want. 
because they worked very hard to reestablish that Cold War. And folks, I think this is what's behind this latest case of poisoning in the UK, saying that it is nerve gas poisoning. Uh, they are saying that there's got, not going to be any new sanctions on Russia over this newest case in Amesbury. Again, very close to Porton Down. Uh, these people travel to Salisbury, uh, which is uh, just a few miles away from the chemical weapons facility of the UK. Uh, they're saying that they now need an investigation first. Well, why didn't they have an investigation first before? Oh, no, they had the sanctions first. You had Nikki Haley joining in with Theresa May. Now they're saying London needs to learn more about the recent poisoning in the town of Amesbury, said the Home Secretary. He has come out and accused Moscow, however, of using the U.K. as a dumping ground, quote-unquote, for poison, and urged Russia to explain exactly what has gone on. And so that's going to be the extent of his investigation. Uh, we're demanding an explanation from Vladimir Putin for why he continues to poison people in the U.K. Well, as I pointed out before, both the symptoms and the fact that nobody died instantly, you know, you can die from uh, other types of chemical weapon poisoning. And what they found in the Skripal case was that it was BZ. It also had Novichok, they said. But the Novichok that was pointed out by the chemical weapons lab that is one of the only half dozen labs that are authorized by the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, that lab in Switzerland made a point of noting that the Novichok that they found there, along with the BZ gas in that sample, was in virgin, pristine condition, meaning that it had not deteriorated. And it deteriorates very rapidly. As the person who invented it said, uh, within a couple of months it would be gone. So now we're supposed to believe that somehow they stumbled upon this, and nobody else had stumbled upon it uh, for several months. We're now supposed to believe that they stumbled on it just at the moment that President Trump is about to meet with Vladimir Putin. Isn't that convenient? It's a convenient lie, is what it is. Uh, you had this situation as uh, uh, we've been told, Novichok is eight times more potent than nerve gas uh, that the U.S. has. It is a form of nerve gas, but it's eight times more potent. They would have died on contact. They would not have exhibited symptoms that looked like they had had an overdose of opioids. We had... Um, the people who worked on them. We had one doctor who worked with them for a half hour without any protective clothing. And then they make a big show of putting out the chemical weapons people out there after the fact. No one else, no one else uh, got sick. We had false uh, reports that were eventually shut down by the hospital about all the people who had gotten sick from that. And yet we still have the uh, British government, the British Home Secretary, saying the use of chemical weapons anywhere is barbaric and inhumane. The decision taken by the Russian government today to deploy these in Salisbury was reckless and callous. There is no plausible alternative explanation on the events in March other than the Russian state was responsible. And so this article from the Blogmire has a few questions. Well, uh, why don't we ask the Skripals where they were when they got sick? Why were their phones switched off? Was there anything suspicious near their house that day? They appeared to be in a hurry to leave. Was this because they had an appointment to keep? Because folks... He was involved with Christopher Steele, the guy that did the Fusion GPS documents. It's the Langley London Connection. Support good oral health with our one-of-a-kind Super Blue fluoride-free products. InfoWars Life brings you a revolutionary toothpaste blend with iodine and nano silver designed to deliver a powerful clean. Enjoy a minty fresh flavor made with peppermint oil or try our bubblegum flavor. Pair this groundbreaking toothpaste with a Super Blue fluoride-free mouthwash and supercharge your oral health. Our amazing mouthwash features natural oils and ancient ingredients used since Aboriginal and Biblical times. Instead of containing fluoride, our Super Blue line is loaded with the good halogen iodine and an array of other beneficial compounds that have been hand-selected for their oral health benefits. Super Blue fluoride-free mouthwash and toothpaste are the first and only to contain all of these natural ingredients, xylitol, nano silver, and iodine. Notice the difference with our Super Blue fluoride-free products. Refresh your breath and invigorate your oral health routine at InfoWarsStore.com. That's InfoWarsStore.com.